the 64 Stanley Cup championship team. So one last tune-up for Roberto Luongo. He will play Wednesday or Friday in Sochi against Norway or Austria, and then it's anyone's guess as to how much he'll play after that. Jonathan Bernier makes his eighth straight and 38th start of the season. While the Leafs are 25th in the league in goals against, he's 13th with 21 wins and in the top three in save percentage among those who played and started as much. See the referees for tonight's game, Chris Rooney, John Hebert, Tony Saracolo, and Steve Miller. Randy Carlisle was uh, fooling around in the warm-up. He warmed up as though he was going to play four lines, 12 forwards and six defensemen, and then he decided to go back to what he did on Thursday, and that's dressed seven defensemen. So Paul Ranger is the seventh, and he starts a different line, then warmed up with Nikolai Kuhleman back at center ice. Yeah, interesting to see Kuhleman. They didn't do too well in the face-off dot, but allowed the balance of those lines to be pretty effective in the last game. Nikolai Kuhleman at center with Mason Raymond on the left wing, and on the right side, Troy Bodie, Kuhleman not a natural center, had all sorts of trouble on the face-offs in Tampa Bay, but the Leafs won, and coaches being creatures of habit. Randy Carlisle goes back to the formula that won the game. An icing call against Vancouver early on. Yeah, I think if you're Randy Carlisle, you say you got to get everything at the net on Roberto Luongo here. Toronto's had tough starts in the last two games, not getting pucks to the net. I would expect a much more aggressive shooting towards the net here in the first. Ryan Kessler at center on the line here with Yannick Hansen on the right side and Chris Higgins on the left. Alex Sedler playing defense here with Rafael Diaz. Playing uh, his fourth game since being acquired from the Montreal Canadiens for Dale Weiss. Here, Vancouver will change on the fly as they get the puck in deep and their top defensive pair of the night comes on. Dan Hamhuis on the left side, Jason Garrison on the right. Now let's get in on the four check. Troy Bodie kicks back and a shot off the side of the net. Rebound and Mason Raymond couldn't quite control the puck after a great shot by Kuhleman. His little backhander towards the front of the net and Garrison clears it away. Carl Gunnarsson, Dion Phaneuf, the defensive pair. It's hard to know who the Leafs will want to match that top pair up against. In the midst of a Vancouver change. Play is stopped here by the linesman in the faceoff will come back I, into the Vancouver zone. I think you got Penalty. too many men on too the ice. Too many men on the ice. I think Vancouver it's called by the linesman. You can see the battle won in the corner there. Garrison can't get it. Nice quick shot by Kuhleman, and that's one that on the doorstep, Raymond had a chance to go back in. So much confusion. You talked about matching lineups. Uh, John Tortorella there, a lot of confusion of who was going on, players standing on the ice, and Cassian ends up taking the penalty, or at least serving. So not an auspicious start for the Vancouver Canucks. Their penalty killing was the best in the league, but it's fallen apart hard times, just like everything else. Eight power play goals against in their last 10 games, and Toronto has the best power play in the league on home ice. And it's slow motion on the ice right now. Dion Phaneuf starts it off with Cody Franson. Up front, Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, and Phil Kessel. Move into the attack, Jason Garrison bumps his man, Bozak off the puck, and it comes back to the blue line. Dion Phaneuf into the middle, Phil Kessel stops up. He's got Cody Franson trying to sneak in back door on the other side. Van Riemsdyk screening, Franson, Phaneuf shoots, just missed the net. Trying to pick a corner, the Leafs get the puck back, Canucks couldn't clear it. Dion Phaneuf again, Kessel's in his shooting position, the shot went to the net. Kessel on the rebound, back to Dion Phaneuf. Cody France and cross ice and the puck's deflected into the corner. Kessel pinned by Kessler. There'll be teammates in Sochi on Team USA. And the play is stopped as we bring in Glenn Healy down between the benches. Well, a couple things you have to know. If you're a player, you got to be able to count to six. If you can't count to six, then you're going to have too many men on the ice. And if you're a coach, you got to have a media guide because this Vancouver team is so banged up a lot of the guys, you have to look at their names, their numbers, and go, oh, where are you from again? A lot of introductions before a lot of these games. Still a minute to go in this first power play of the game that is Toronto's. Morgan Riley takes a shot that's knocked away. Mason Raymond can't get a shot, but he hangs onto the puck. He's chased by Ryan Stanton, had the puck taken away 
by Richardson, and he cleared the puck down the ice. Boy, tough start for Roberto Luongo. All kinds of traffic in front. It was Van Riemsdyk the last time, and here he got Lupul in front. He's having to fight through a crowd to see the puck. Back-to-back -to -back tough rebounds for him. You give them one, but don't give the team two. Daniel Sedin with a long shoot in. Morgan Riley back to collect the puck. The Leafs won't have to wait half the first period to get a shot on goal, at least tonight, as they did in their last couple of games. And there's an errant pass by Nazem Kadri. He gave it away, and Jordan Schrader cleared the puck the length of the ice, and that'll just about do it. One last rush coming up in this power play. Weaving to center, Jake Gardner. Nazem Kadri to Mason Raymond. He fanned on the pass. Try to go cross ice. Kadri plays the puck around. Penalties over. Zach Cassian serving the minor penalty for too many men on the ice. Gets back. So it's five on five. Raymond centering pass picked off and Cassian takes off. One man back. It's Jake Gardner heading for the net is Chris Higgins. The pass doesn't get to him. Cut off by Mason Raymond on the back check. And Joffrey Lupel starts out of his own zone to center. Trying to pull away from Ryan Kessler. He dumps the puck in. That's Frank Corrado. Frank is a Toronto-born Vancouver Canuck playing his first game in his hometown. Played minor hockey in Vaughan, Junior in Sudbury. A 20-year-old who's on defense here with all of the injuries, and he's facing Nikolai Kuhlman, who just shot the puck wide of the net. David Clarkson back to the blue line. A long shot and more traffic in front of the net, and it was Corrado who blocked that and sent the puck into the corner. Yannick Hansen forechecking as Jonathan Bernier plays the puck, and the Leafs start a breakup. Jay McClement has Kuhleman and Clarkson with him as he gets in over the blue line, chased by Kellen Lane. And there's going to be a penalty here on the play, and it's another Vancouver penalty. And a high sticking call. Jay McClement got a stick in the face, and Kellen Lane is headed for the penalty box. A really disjointed start here by the Vancouver Canucks on the road, having to kill two in a row. Lane does go to the box. You can see coming up the middle of the ice, McClement is just an errant stick. He had one hand on his stick. And he doesn't like it. He's watching it on the big screen right now. As you see McClement just carrying through. Watch just one hand and goes right up the stick and into his face. The last shift, you're seeing players do what they do best. Lots of traffic in front of the net by JVR. And then this is exactly what Clarkson wants to create. Create a little bit of energy, create a little space. After the hit, makes three more threats to the bench. It's perfect. You don't play special teams. You're not playing a lot early. And then Vancouver's shorthanded again. Ryan Kessler out killing the penalty here with Chris Higgins. Dan Hamhuse will play a lot tonight in Garrison. They clear the puck. And the Maple Leafs have their usual number one power play on the ice again. Dion Phaneuf to James Van Riemsdyk. Cross ice Cody Franson into setup. Kessel drives up through the middle. There's a tip at the side of the net. By Tyler Bozak and Luongo made the save. Just one shot on that first power play for Toronto, but they had a few blocked. Franson and Riemsdyk lets the puck go. Kessel. Turns off the boards. Brad Richardson pressured him. Knocked the puck loose. Couldn't clear it. Franson with room. Shoots long with a save. And a beauty, too, but the Leafs couldn't get a hold of the rebound. There was a couple of them there. Richardson trying to clear the puck. Moved it up the boards. Kessel got it. To Dion Phaneuf. Slides into the middle and passes to Cody Franson. Kessel on the other side. Wants the puck. He's open. Now he gets it from Van Riemsdyk. Won't get a shot. Cross ice. Franson hesitates. Into the middle. Bozak's shot is blocked. And Richardson cleared the puck. A great job of taking away the passing lane down low there. Some anxious moments and a little delay, but no chance to get that puck cross crease. Henry Raymond and Lupul take over on this Toronto power play. Lupul in front. Cadry headed in his skates. And Yannick Hansen gets the puck. He's one on three. Skates to center and gets the puck deep. In the last half a minute of the second Vancouver penalty. Now Morgan Riley pulling away from Yannick Hansen, and that's not easy to do. Lupul couldn't feed the puck back to Riley. It was in some skates. To an open side, nobody there. Jake Gardner got to the puck first. Morgan Riley turns in a hurry, looking for an outlet. Now he passes into the corner, and Kadri takes over. Lupul is the traffic in front of the net. Kadri to Riley. Jake Gardner fakes. Passes off, and that's kicked away from the front of the net. Yannick Hansen clears the puck, and Kellen Lane's back on the ice. Toronto 0 for 2 on the power play, and there's an icing call against Vancouver. Well, not without their chances, though. A good opportunity in front. We said how much traffic's been in front of Roberto Luongo, but here, as Franson winds up, Van Riemsdyk goes off to the side for a pass. So that allowed Luongo to get a good view and made an excellent save. And then the rebound, 
And you can see cross seam open for Van Riemsdyk, but a nice job of Hamhoos going down, taking it away, and then a block by Burroughs. Good play by Hansen here, guys, to lay it to face off. Vancouver did not know that the penalty had expired, and as a result, they've got a tired group on the ice. So a little delay with the stick, then pretend you're going to take the draw. Now we get the real guys in for battle. Lane had to stay out there because he came out of the penalty box and iced the puck. Hansen trying to clear the puck. Leafs trying to make Vancouver pay for the icing call. Alexander, he's Olympic bound. So is Daniel Sedin, who bounced the puck to center, and Vancouver scrambles to change. Gunnarsson right back into Jay McClement. With David Clarkson headed to the front of the net, that's where the puck goes, and Alongo kicked it away. Nikolai Kuhlman. Cassian bounces the puck by Tim Gleason and goes after it. Got there first. David Booth. Jordan Schrader. Zach Cassian up for Vancouver. As Luongo plays the puck and sets it up for Frank Corrado. Schrader with the tip in. And the first man back is the smooth skating Morgan Riley. Taking a shift here with Paul Ranger. I believe this is his first of the game. Up the middle, Bozak to Van Weems. Dyke snaps the shot into the glove of Roberto Luongo. And we might see that in Sochi in a very short time. You're watching Hockey Night in Canada from Toronto on CBC. Glenn, not an eventful start to the game except for David Clarkson has been involved. Well, I've been involved and it's right from warm-up. It's all now about forget the expectation, forget the contract, just go play. Do what you do best, and that's exactly what he has done. We are seven minutes plus into this game. Two big hits, and he has made numerous threats. Vancouver's got to get it going. This is the only shot in seven minutes. I'm going I'm to make a comeback if that's what you got to do to win in this league. They haven't won in six. Yeah, they're banged up, lots of excuses, but compete. And they've been shorthanded for four minutes. And you see Clarkson there. It looks like a rib. He's getting some treatment on there. He's won the draw. Gleason shot kicked out by Luongo. Raymond Finn. In fact, his stick broke in half. Troy Bodie to the blue line. Riley's quick shot. Luongo has to make another save. And he's in a shooting gallery right now. As the Leafs own the game but haven't been able to score a goal, they've outshot Vancouver 6-1. No, you had to figure a game plan coming in, get everything to the net. And there's a good combination of pucks and bodies. You can see as Luongo kicks that rebound out, a great chance for Raymond, but his stick explodes. But once again, Luongo with traffic, bodies flying in on him, does a nice job of holding on and getting a whistle. Nikolai Kudelman to face off again against Brian Kessler. And he wins another one. Who knew? Boy, he didn't do very well. He was 3-11 and 11 last game for 21%. So two big wins there. He's headed for the Olympics and hopes that he'll be with my mate Evgeny Malkin again. They played together during the lockout. Library-like building. As Hansen gets to center and dumps the puck in. Chris Higgins, first man on it. Dion Phaneuf on him. Phaneuf and Gunnarsson playing against this Ryan Kessler centered line. Hansen twisting and turning to get away from a check. Nice pass to Diaz. He didn't get much on the shot. It was in too close to it. Edler on the other side. His shot was blocked by Phaneuf. Higgins for Kessler intercepted by Mason Raymond. The Canucks could use him right now. All the bodies that are out of the lineup. Raymond, the former Canuck, tried to get by Edler. He's taken down there'll be a penalty on the play in fact a pair of them by the looks of it yeah this is one where raymond had he just kept going and not launched himself up might have been able to draw the only penalty instead he gets called as well i think a good call I mean, he does a nice job of beating the traffic there sticking the legs and the quick spin around the one and a half gainer with the twist is what caught the a little eye too much. The a little too much glenn is the bench as quiet as our Building seems to be here. Uh, well, they're going at it now, I can tell you that. I think the building is quiet. I think what was happening here is everybody was thinking about what Jim said, and Kuhleman's really going to play with Malkin? Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, but here it is. Again, more of the same, and there's the referee. Either, Randy, you take care of this player, or I will. I'm going to take somebody to the box. Bozak won the faceoff. It's four on four here. Got to get a new stick. Daniel Sedin. Got Jordan Schrader with him. Hamhuis jumps up on the play, and now well, they get a tag up because they were offside. 
regroup. Harrison to Schrader and now to Daniel Sedin. Hasn't scored this calendar year in 18 games. So unusual for a guy who's used to being near the top of the scoring in the NHL. I have to wonder how Sweden is feeling about that. They lose Henrik, and for all intents and purposes, you look at Daniel's game right now, and it's nowhere near where it has been throughout his career. And nor is Alex Hedler, so he's on yeah. his way to Sweden as well from the Vancouver Canucks. Jason Garrison hustles back against Phil Kessel. Jordan Schrader to center, dumps the puck in. Vancouver and Toronto make changes on the fly here, almost halfway through the first period in a scoreless game, and the Canucks still with that one shot on goal from center ice. Joffrey Lupo rink wide, nowhere near Kadri. Corrado is back to Ryan Stanton on the other side, puck up by him. Just onside, Franson to Gardner, dangling, he shoots off a leg. Brad Richardson gets to the puck, David Booth taking off up the middle. There's the pass, it's blocked by Cody Franson. Gathered in again, and in deep is Richardson, he couldn't get the backhand away. Booth will take over. Bounces the puck back. Here's Corrado. Booth trying to get away from Jake Gardner and drive towards the net. David Booth really started to show some signs of life, and that's been good news for Vancouver in games of late. Yeah, of all the times to have a break, it's probably not a good time for Booth. He's getting a little bit of confidence. Well, you saw again, Gardner, the ability when you make a mistake or get caught in deep, the ability to get yourself out of trouble with your legs. What speed coming back on the back check? It's fun to watch he and Morgan Riley play together. David Clarkson in off the wing, sliding was Ham Hughes to knock the puck loose. Kessler back in support. Now Ham Hughes looks up ice and finds Yannick Hansen. Kessler on the other side, tapping his stick, wanted the puck to shoot him. Kessler gets there first, Hansen. Higgins drifting towards the front of the net. Hansen battles with McClement. Riley is there to Clarkson, and the Leafs get out to center. Mason Raymond. In on Rafael Diaz. McClement onto the puck. Canucks gang that and won the battle, and Hansen gets to center. He wants a change, so he advanced the puck, and then he doesn't get off. Roberto Luongo instead will cover up with Jay McClement right there. Shots are 7-1 Toronto. This game awaits its first goal, and some loud cheering, too. Ohio brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Roberto Luongo, one of 11 returnees representing Team Canada in Sochi. We're going to see if history repeats itself. Four years ago in his final game before the Vancouver Games, it was the Minnesota Wild that gave him a rude send-off. Luongo allowed four goals and got chased from that game, but just 13 days later, he had a gold medal around his neck. Jim? He looks pretty good early on tonight, and he's had to be sharp. Lots of traffic in front, two power plays that the Leafs have had. They haven't got a lot of shots through to him on those power plays, but he had to work to be able to see. Still just a single shot for Vancouver. Uh, with six goals in Vancouver's last four games, I think he anticipates, I can't give up one. That might be it. I'm done. Alex Hedler to Daniel Sedin, a weak one to the net. And that was going wide, but Bernier decided to stop it and scoop it up. Look at this lineup. You look at Daniel Sedin without his brother and the ineffectiveness, as you mentioned, Jim. The, just shocking the lack of offense from number 22. You just come to expect year in and year out. He's been so consistent. He's not the fastest guy, but even at that, his game looks about half speed right now. Yeah, you wonder all that early ice that John Tortorella has given him. The ice time minutes are way up. And right now, you're right, he just doesn't have that jump. Shot doesn't look hard, crisp. Well, you expect to get lucky. I mean, 18 games when you're playing that amount, playing all those power plays, you would expect to get a lucky one. This has been a shocking stretch for both he and Henrik, and now Henrik out. Well, what is the speed in their game? It's the ability to move the puck. Right. Yeah. And, you know, they, they're two players that think with one brain. You know, we've done it many times in games where as soon as the puck goes to Daniel, just look for Henrik. Is this going to go back to Daniel right after it goes to Henrik? And then at some point, Burroughs or somebody would go to the net and it would be on their stick and thank you very much, it's a goal. And having half of that kind of dynamic duo missing takes away a great bit of offense. And, and we've seen a couple passes tonight to Daniel where it's to nobody. 
See you at the bottom of your screen. Olympic primetime is coming up after this early start. Start it early so we can get you to the Olympics early after this game. There is lots of great action today. And Ron and Don will be along in Olympic prime following this contest between Vancouver and Toronto. Kellen Lane. He's playing with Zach Dolphy and Tom Sestino here in the fourth line. They're trying to change, and in come the Maple Leafs. Kadri shoots. Luongo fought it off, and he fought the rebound right by Nazem Kadri. Frank Corrado got a stick in the face. Higgins comes back the other way. There's going to be a Toronto penalty on the play. There's a long shot off the wing. And Jonathan Bernier tested by Yannick Hansen, and Vancouver is going to get a power play. Well, we saw earlier saying take care of... Clarkson, it's not Clarkson who's going. I believe it's Kadri who gets the high stick on Frank Corrado. This is a good chance by the Toronto Maple Leafs. What a bad change by the Vancouver Canucks. And you can see the errant stick off of the shot up into the face of Corrado. And then at the other end, an excellent save by Jonathan Bernier on a rebound that he had to track across. Both goalies did a great job of controlling rebounds. One that punched it to a spot where there was nobody. And one that just absorbed the puck. Vancouver on the power play. It has been a mystery for them all season, but they have scored a couple of power play goals recently in Montreal the other night in a loss. Alex Edler had one. Higgins had one. So it's Edler and Diaz, the pointman on the power play. Alex Burroughs, who hasn't scored this season up front, with Kessler and Daniel Sedin, and they go offside. Well, as much as we talked about Daniel Sedin and his trouble, just shockingly, Burroughs. The broken jaw obviously got him off to a tough start, but you go 27 games and 64 plus shots without putting one in the back of the net. That's simply shocking for the type of player and the positions that he gets in and the opportunity he gets on the power play to not be able to crack the do it. He's just not his vexing self, and I think largely it's hard to be an antagonist when you haven't got your own game together. No, absolutely. And you know, wear that mask because of the broken jaw until the end of the month and they'll finally be able to get rid of it. New power play unit to center. Weak shot by Jason Garrison, easily handled by Bernier. Hansen awaiting that wraparound and he kept the puck in to get set up. Frank Corrado out on the power play. Chris Higgins centering for Schrader, he was checked. Corrado gets a hold of the puck and gets it deep. Higgins, Hansen in front pass, hit the back of the net. Schrader to the blue line, walking the line, Corrado passes off, Schrader shoots right into the glove of Jonathan Bernier. You know, when you look at the confidence level of a power play, it's pretty obvious that this Vancouver team has no confidence, and here's an example here. I mean, this has no chance of going in. Take it to the corner and shoot on net. There has to be a better play. You've got five, they've got four. And this particular play here, too, again, it's relatively easy for Bernier just to put a glove on it. Let's make a change, get our face off guy out, win the draw, and down the ice it goes. Just as we drew it up. Toronto's penalty killing has been getting better again. It's not very good, 28th in the league, but in recent games, they've killed 12 of their last 13 penalties. Here's Kessler right up the middle. Shoots and a nice save by Bernier. Burrows to Diaz and back. Edler sneaking in down the right side. The pass comes back to Diaz. He was going one way. The puck went the other. Again, that was Daniel trying to anticipate the movement of Diaz and got it wrong. But you saw a good example of the speed of Kessler there in the open ice. There was a big hole there for him, too. Kessler in after the puck against Dion Phaneuf. Charged loose by Paul Ranger. He fanned on that backhand. Couldn't get the puck out. Edler kept it in. Kessler and Ranger come together. This time Ranger gets the puck out on his forehand as the penalty to Nazem Kadri expires. Vancouver's 0 for 1 on the power play. And now the Canucks are up to six shots on goal. They had three on that power play and Bernier had to be shot. There's a turnover and Vancouver holds the puck in. David Booth, one on two. Taken out hard by Kadri, but he stays on the puck. Back to the blue line. And Ryan Stanton into Brad Richardson. Nice move to get open and in a backhander stopped by Bernier. And it's a good thing he stopped that because Cassian at the side of the net was there for a tap in. Still no goals for Vancouver or Toronto on Hockey Night in Canada from Toronto. 
For Team USA in Sochi, I wonder if it'll be like 2010. Kessler, Patrick Kane, and Dustin Brown. Lots of different options, and you get example. The entry on a power play, good speed. Little fake to the outside, and didn't quite get the shot that he wanted on it. You've got a defenseman standing still, Ranger unable to get there. And watch at the very end, this shot didn't quite get all of it. And a nice save by Bernier. At least Vancouver's starting to get some pucks to the net. Toronto won the face off. Cody Franson under pressure here from Booth and Cassie took a slash in the back of the legs as he lifted the puck onto the lead pitch. Well, you know, the anticipation by Ranger is not by fluke, and here's why. Here's the entry before. Kessler over to Sedin. Okay, it's offside, no big deal. That's the entry. And so Ranger anticipates and cheats that it's going to Sedin, it doesn't. Good for Kessler to recognize it. Vancouver won the draw. Stanton's shot was deflected wide of the net. And the battle on the boards ensues. Joffrey Lupul won it. Out here with Kadri and Clarkson. And an icing call against Toronto. Jordan Schrader to face off against Nazem Kadri after that icing call. And Kadri got the draw with some help from Franson. Clarkson can't get out. He was poke checked. Hamhuis stood up at the blue line. Rupel with a little tip through, and Kadri turns. He's got some speed in on Garrison. Chips by him, and Garrison with a great reach. Got the puck around to Daniel Sedin. Schrader up the middle. Burroughs coming up late in the play. And a pass back to the net flutters onto Jonathan Bernier, and the Leafs take over. Kadri with Lupul. Daniel back for the puck. Vancouver's changing, so Ham Hughes turns back. Let's a fresh line get on the ice. It's Kessler's line. Out against Gleason and Riley right now. Not a whole lot of line matchup going on, is there, no. in this game? A very different Vancouver lineup for Carlisle to react to. But here's two of the best lines out on the ice. Head-to-head, -head, these would be the top lines. Riley tried to lead a rush. Hansen back the other way. Kessler turns on a dime through the puck in front off a couple of skates. Higgins couldn't get it. And Bozak did and bounced the puck out to center. Alex Hedler is there and dumps the puck back in for the Canucks. And they'll change on the fly once again as we get to the late stages of the first period. Bozak. And Reamsdyke dumps the puck in. And Toronto will change on the fly. A pass went by Sestito down the ice. No icing on the play. Fourth line out here for Vancouver. Chuck Dolphys from Paris, Ontario. Tom Sestito and Kellen Lane from Oakville. Alonga out to play the puck. Frank Corrado. Dolphys turned back. Corrado plays the puck to Ryan Stanton. Jay McClements right on here. Bodie just about picked off that D to D pass behind the net. Out at center, here's David Booth. He's got Dolphy with him. Trying to go around Ranger. Good stick by Paul Ranger. That'll keep him in the lineup. Fraser McLaren. With an outlet to Troy Bodie. He didn't get to center when he dumped the puck in. And now that fourth line for Toronto's got to stay. It's an icing call, and Vancouver will change. Yeah, and now the Sedin and Burroughs come jumping over quickly to try to take advantage. Here's the defensive play by Ranger. Great example of not overplaying the man. Booth tried to maneuver it a little bit to the outside, get an angle on Ranger, and Ranger did a nice job of keeping him to the outside with a good active stick. Leafs take their time to get ready for this faceoff, and Jay McClement was on the ice, and they do have a good centerman. A one draw and a shot by Jason Garrison is stopped by Bernier. Jordan Schrader got the faceoff. The Canucks were thinking there might be another racing call there against that fourth line. Here's a tip through Daniel Sedin into the attacking zone. Schrader to the front of the net. Right to the side of the goal is Burroughs, and you'd think playing there he'd have one bounce in off him. James Van Riemsdyk. 
Bozak up the middle. Kessel was there as well, and the pass is swatted away in a three on two the other way. Daniel Sedin, Alex Burrow stops up, feeds the trailer, and Hughes stopped by Bernier. Great play by Ham Hughes up the middle and a better play by Bernier to stone him. Bozak out to center. He's got Kessel with him. They're two on two in the last minute of the first period as the pace picks up. Kessel with a shot that is deflected wide of the net. Kessler takes over for Vancouver. He skates out to center, makes a backhand pass to Hansen who shoots the puck in. Morgan Riley. Steps it up, decided to take off and now he looked like he got hit in the face with a puck. And Riley's got a change. He was lucky he didn't get himself into some trouble there as he was trying to get one on two up the middle. Here's Yannick Hansen with his shot. And Bernier, who's getting busier, made another nice save. Here's Ryan Kessler with a shot. He scores! Canucks needed a break, and they get a lucky one there as that went off. Jonathan Bernier and into the net, and Vancouver's Ryan Kessler makes it 1 0 Canucks. Oh, a shocking goal by Bernier. He can't believe that that one got by him. And Glenn would attest to this more. It's been an interesting period for him. Not much action first. Here's a good blocker save early on. The puck goes around and the Vancouver Canucks able to keep it in. An innocent looking play and just didn't read it. It was a knuckler a little bit as you can see the quick release. But off his blocker and down and in. Well, what I like is the position of Kessler. He goes up high enough that he can't be covered by Gardner, but he's low enough that he can't be taken by James Van Riemsdyk. He's just right in the middle, a tweener, so to speak. And Gardner does come out, doesn't want to come out too far, but it's not far enough and a great release, great placement. Savable puck, though, I agree with December. 20th for Ryan Kessler. He only scored one in his last nine games. Uh, he gets his 20th from Higgins and Edler at 1938. Vancouver on the board first to hit one to nothing. They've now outshot Toronto 12 8. Here they come again. Brad Richardson and he can't get a shot off before the horn sounds. So a late first period goal by Olympian Ryan Kessler from Higgins and Edler and another look at the first goal of the game. Well, you mentioned the shot. Look at the positioning. That's a tough shot to make across your body and to me, Bernier tried to knock that one into the corner and just overplayed it. Instead of knocking it into the corner, he knocked it back the other way and into his net. Well, Toronto generated all of the early chances. They had outshot Vancouver 7-1, but that was largely because of a couple of power plays. But Ryan Kessler has the game's first goal. It's 1-0 for the Canucks. Coach's corner from Sochi is next on Hockey Night in Canada. First period of tonight's game between Vancouver and Toronto was like two different periods. Toronto outshot Vancouver 7-1 early, and then Tor Vancouver were outshot the Leafs 11-1 in the second half. Well, it took 12 minutes to get that first shot on net. There wasn't much going on until this. And it was Hamus who hit the post, and then the next shot on net is a goal. Past four games, six goals for Vancouver, four from their defense. And it is just ironic that a defenseman gets it rolling. It was the post that turned the tide. And now it's 1-0 for Vancouver. And they had a pretty good second period in that all the other night. Pretty good second half of the first period here. Consistency's been a bit of a problem. The Leafs won't like it all the way they played the back half of that first period after having a couple of power plays and failing early. Alex Edler in his own zone for Vancouver. Flips the puck to center. Morgan Riley took a puck in the face in the first period. Clearly all right. But not on that play. Bailed out Tim Gleason, a 2010 Olympian for the United States. Advanced the puck out of his own zone. And he's touched the puck, but it came to Daniel Sedin. Through the middle of the ice, knocked down by Carl Gunnarsson. Yannick Hansen is there. 236 has come together. And Dion Phaneuf moves the puck to center. Joffrey Lupel with David Clarkson knocked out of the air by Dan Hamhuis. Daniel Sedin to Jordan Schrader with Alex Burrows. There's the shot that's blocked by Gunnarsson. And he goes after Schrader. Daniel Sedin gets the puck to Garrison. Takes the shot. Bernier makes the save. And he hangs on and stops play as we bring in Rob Pizzo. Thanks very much, Jim. I spoke to Glenn Gulletson, assistant coach 
of the Vancouver Canucks during the intermission. He talked about how big that Kessler goal was, especially for a team that he says has had no puck luck. But I asked him about what Glenn was talking about, shot selection in that first period. He said, we want shots any way, shape, or form, pucks and bodies to the net. That's the motto of the second period. Guys? That's what all coaches say now. They want to get bodies to the front of the net. And even Randy Carlisle talks about that all the time, yet his team scores more off the rush than most teams in the league. Hey, Chicago are probably scoring the prettiest goals around right now. Losing teams want shots. Winning teams talk about goals. It's all about chemistry, though, guys. And, you know, you watch these two entries into the zone. And... Hansen gets the first entry into the zone. It's Sedin pass to Hansen. Now here, bunt this back to Sedin. There he's coming. You can see him to the right of your screen. Instead, no, let's stick handle this into the corner. And likewise with the next entry. Same thing. You've got support. You've got 22 right there. Give him the puck. Instead, you take an absolute impossible shot from an impossible angle. I think Henrik would have given it to him. <laughs> oh, it would be back and forth in their sleeves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but again, chemistry. You're playing with different players every night. You know, you're getting shots. That's the shot the coach wanted. Seems to me, Glenn, that one doesn't come without the other. Oh, yeah. Totally agree. There's got to be a balance, though. This line for Toronto was pretty quiet in the first period. Bozak, Van Riemsdyk, and Kessel. Hottest line in the league right now, Bozak. Kessel, his centering pass, hit the side of the net, didn't get to James Van Riemsdyk. Higgins, Ryan Kessler, Tim Gleason, first man back. Nice job of protecting the puck so Morgan Riley could take it and take off. Bozak to Kessel, hit him in the skate, hit him in the side of the foot after it hurt him. Ryan Stanton up the middle for Brad Richardson. Puck's taken away by Morgan Riley, then taken back by Richardson, who's from nearby Belleville. Gleason up the boards. Van Riemsdyk with a breakout. Clarkson is with him. He wants to change, so he gets to center and dumps the puck in. Brad Richardson up the boards for David Booth. He's checked by Paul Ranger. The puck goes the distance. Bernier is out to play it. Wasn't sure if he saw Cassian coming around behind the net there or not, but he made the play in time to keep it away from him. David Clarkson turned around to center. He's with Joffrey Lupo. Gives him the puck. Centering pass in escape. And never got to the front of the net for Paul Ranger. He turned and took a shot. Clarkson again has Cadre in front. Can't get a shot. Lupo can't get the backhand away. And the puck is cleared away from the front of the net by Brad Richardson. Well, there's one of your examples, Jim, of a nice rush up the ice. It was going to be pretty. Just got broken up. But another good shot on goal that Luongo fought through traffic to stop. Here's Jake Gardner again with that great skating into the attacking zone. Sharp angled shot. And Luongo steered that aside. Lupo and Cadbury battle for the puck with Kellen Lane and Alex Edler. Clarkson gets it. To put up this shot. Stopped and the rebound is chipped into the corner after Luongo made the initial save. Vancouver to center. Zach Dolphy with some speed. Wrist shot that went wide. Kellen Lane, number 54. Six foot six forward. Got the puck deep. Morgan Riley. Moves it out. Jay McClemmon with a soft pass for Kessel. He couldn't handle it. Lane comes back the other way. He takes a bump as he dumps the puck in. Morgan Riley to the front of the net. Dion Phaneuf, one of seven league defensemen dressed tonight. James Van Riemsdyk takes the shot wide of the net. McClemmon gets the puck. Oh, he tripped and fell. Went back first in the boards and McClemmon is hurt. And the referee finally stops play. Jay McClements in some trouble. That was a hard, hard collision with the boards. Yeah, no call was made, but it's his head that hit the boards heavily. And you can see the blood on the ice is the end result. Scary moment. You're out of control. You Going after the puck, let's see, was there any real contact made? I, I just think he lost his edge there. Trying to kick the puck. But watch his head snap back. That didn't look, maybe a slash on the leg got him there, but his face hit the ice actually when he landed. You, can't, you cannot get hit by anything harder in this building than the ice. And you know, when you get 26 points in 18 games, like Phil Kessel, the shift before, you're going to pay attention to him. And any chance you can, you're going to lay a little bit of a beating on him. There's a slash to the hands. 
And you can tell Kessel felt the effects. Didn't leave the bench. He's okay. And he got his own player's pass right in the ankle. So he forgot about the pain in his yeah, hand because his foot hurt so his bad. His foot hurt so bad. He's right. So now the Leafs, who only dressed 11 forwards tonight, are down to 10, and they're missing a very good penalty killer and center iceman in Jay McClement. Alex Burrows for Jordan Schrader couldn't get the puck through, then he took a shot. Kicked away by Jonathan Bernier. Here's Mason Raymond. Played almost 400 games for the Vancouver Canucks. Squeezed off of the boards by Jason Garrison. Burrows back for the puck with Schrader and Daniel Sedin. The diminutive center Schrader dumps the puck in. Vancouver will change on the clock. For neither team able to really establish any offensive zone presence. It's been one chance and out on both sides. And an icing call against Toronto. A few things missing from this game. I think a little bit of hitting, a little bit of passion. And for Morgan Riley, it has been uh, missing a little bit of teeth. He's hitting them out to the puck. He loses the two. It's not a hard shot, but it's one that does some damage, and that's not pretty. Welcome to the league. If they were yours to start, <laughs> yeah, they might by the been. time you finish, they won't be they yours won't anymore. Be. Nice, get a two-week break and start it in a dentist's, dentist's chair. chair. What a great way. Do they have dentists in Jamaica? <laughs> yeah, they probably get one. Well, you, you know, you kind of want to read the minds of both benches and the coaches on both teams. Because you know all of them are thinking that tomorrow is yeah. Jamaica, it's yeah. Bahamas. It is the last day of school. <laughs> you know, Mike Babcock had an interesting comment. He was asked about that today just before the Red Wings game in Tampa. And he, his reply was, you know, we're not going anywhere until after the game tonight, so we might as well stay and play hard and get two points. And you can sense, though, it is a bit different in here. Even the crowd's atmosphere wasn't as intense normally. Randy Carlisle having a few words with the officials. Didn't like the change by John Tortorella and the fact that he wasn't able to make his. All around the league today, the most intensity comes from the coaches behind <laughs> yeah, the benches. they're grinding out, aren't they? I'm sure Paul McLean's not feeling all that great today after... Ottawa's disappointing loss. Brad Richardson squeezed off on the boards by David Clarkson. And the puck went off the boards and out of play. Well, Jim, the one thing that is the Toronto Maple Leafs can look at here, down by one in a game that they really need to win to keep this good run going, is second periods. They're plus 35 in the second period compared to their first. 37 goals in the first, 72 in their most successful period. So Randy Carlisle's grinding the bench right now, having a lot of talk with the officials, trying to get the matchup he wants. Giving it to Johnny Barry. Didn't feel like he was getting the last change that he deserves on home ice. Oh, he's not discriminating against either referee. <laughs> he's going at them both, is he? Absolutely at them both. They were telling him to hurry up and He's telling him to make the other guys hurry up, and I'll get my change then. And here's this Kessler against Bozak line once again that we're seeing. And an icing call against Vancouver. Six minutes into the second period. And Rafael Diaz, who's a pretty successful start to his tenure with Vancouver, a trade for Dale Weiss. He's got a goal and assist in the two games, and obviously John Totoretto playing him over 23 minutes on average, so he's fit in pretty well so far. Hit it to Sochi to play for Switzerland, along with Yannick Weber, and that's an interesting one because Weber hasn't been able to play the last few games, but he's been cleared medically to play for the Swiss at the Olympics. That's a move that they had to make with the injuries that they had. At one point, they had four defensemen out on their back end, and that's impossible to compete minus that. And they gave up a guy who doesn't have much finish. Nice. And so here's a guy who can insulate, hey, like a, a Frankie Corrado. You can't have him play 23 minutes at that age. Not yet. So it gives you a little bit of a buff. You know, Corrado's been great. And it cans into Edler, and he shot just wide. The rebound off the boards, and Bernier had to get across and made a nice save on Ryan Kessler. Ryan Kessler has the only goal of the game so far on Hockey Night in Canada. Here's the chance for Ryan Kessler, who's also a member of Team USA and has a goal in this one. And that's stopped easily by Jonathan Bernier, who got across there quickly. Boy, there have been a lot of injuries in the last few days and a lot of pullouts at the Olympics that really affect that tournament that's upcoming. 
think about the Swedes without Henrik Sedin, with Daniel not playing particularly well, with Zetterberg coming off injury, the Finns just lost Koivu and Filpula. Well, those are two big losses for them. Well, break it down. You look at last season, talk about a compressed schedule, right? You get out of the lockout, play till almost July, and then this season, you shut her down for 15, 16 days, and you're doing a season in 172 days instead of 192. Yeah, they're going to have injuries. You're asking a lot of these athletes. Danik Hansen fed the puck towards the front of the net. Phil Kessel. Paul Ranger starts out. He's with Tim Gleason. Van Reemstad looking for Kessel off his skate. Fluff gets the puck. Steered wide. He put the puck into the corner trying to take a shot on goal. Carl Gunnarsson on the other side. Van Reemsdijk put up. Shoots and Luongo makes a nice save. And he's looked pretty steady. That's a dozen shots he's faced against the Leafs. Well, in the first period, it was traffic in front of Luongo. He's looking through bodies. He's having a hard time tracking the puck. Here's a great chance with a hard shot. But look at the front of the net. All vacated. Nice box out by Garrison and Hamhuis. And nobody there in front of Luongo, and he easily makes that save. Luongo takes the entire stick side away, knows he's got glove side, and so a left-hand shot, you shoot across your body, more time to see it, it's easy save. Another face-off win, Fanuf to the front of the net, and the puck was knocked away. All five Canucks were right there in front of Roberto Luongo. And now an icing call against the Vancouver Canucks top line. It's time for the Crown Royal Icebreaker. Why not try Crown Royal Maple on the Rocks? Crown Royal, the official whiskey partner of the NHL. We talked a lot about the young defenseman. I watched Corrado get back to the front of the net, does a nice read, gets into position. He takes away. That was a slap pass trying to get over to Lupo. And he read it perfectly and made a good defensive effort. Well, that is one thing that Mike Gillis has done a lot more since he took over as general manager and that is draft kids and great to love this from ontario and dan palang was a guy who scouted Corrado, watched him and they picked him in the fifth round but more so now than ever ontario kids are the focus of this vancouver team got a heck of a defenseman in chris tanev an ontario kid bonus he didn't have to draft him there's david Clarkson. Lupo's in front of the net. The puck doesn't get there. Stanton looked after that. Daniel Sedin in traffic. Ryan Stanton. Jordan Schrader didn't get the puck out. Jake Gardner kept it in. Patiently moved it along the boards and Lupo couldn't handle it. Troy Bodie fresh off the bench. Branson was there pinching down and now he'll have to get back. And Schrader wants to get off. He just chipped the puck out. And he heads for the bench in this long change second period. Gardner steps to center and dumps the puck in. Mason Raymond first on. Troy Bodie. Kuhlman's up front. Bodie battles to get the puck. Raymond's wrap around and Longo coolly scoops up the puck. Well, you can sense a little bit of energy, a little bit of energy in the building. A couple of plays to get the puck in deep. And the speed of Raymond coming out of the corner. Bodie keeps it alive. Good support down low. You can see a chip puck and an excellent read by Luongo, though. He was already there. He was right tight against the post, and then he reacted well to that puck with the glove. See, Luongo is saved from our LASIK MD net cam. And Roberto's made 13 of them now. Canada will play Luongo in one of the first two games in Sochi. Carey Price in the other. And then Mike Babcock will decide who's going to run from there. That's the way they usually do it. First two games against Norway and Austria. Third one against Finland. And whoever gets that game will have a chance to run with it for a while. Tyler Bozak. Drop pass. Van Riemsdijk shot. Brad Richardson deflected that off the glass. David Booth. Out to center. Jake Gardner is there. Cody France into Bozak. A relay to Kessel. His shot went off the stick. Van Riemsdijk. Or Kessel from behind the net, he got it to his backhand, but he was in too deep and hit the side of the net. Van Riemsdyk with a wraparound attempt. That's the most action this line has had around the net for Toronto. Pucks kept in, centered by Kessel. Saving the day was hand use at the side of the net. Back to the front of the goal, the Canucks are scrambling. Cody Franson holds the puck in. 
And he's tipped it away. Van Riemsdyk centering for Bozak. Took it off a stick. Gardner, quick shot. Blocked in front by Hamhees. Van Riemsdyk with a backhander wide of the, wide the net. Now a tired Vancouver line is under pressure. Morgan Riley, fresh off the bench, takes the shot and it's deflected wide. Kessel. Cassian couldn't get the puck out. Bozak holds it in. Van Riemsdyk. Kessel's in the corner. Van Riemsdyk hangs on. Now he cycles back and Brad Richardson broke up the play. And finally Vancouver gets out to center. Zach Cassian dumps the puck in and the Canucks get a much needed change. Uh, Richardson going after Van Riemsdyk. That's the best shift by that line all game and still unable to get the puck past Luongo. All of it started because Cassian didn't get the puck out. That didn't make Tortorella and that bench in Vancouver very happy. That's 40 seconds of hard work based on six feet of ice. And that's why Zach Cassian hasn't been able to break into their top six on a regular basis. Kessler, Hansen, Pernier. Still a one nothing game with the Canucks in the lead on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. 14 much-needed minutes from Dan Hamhuis on his return to the lineup tonight. Well, you, you play with your brain as much as you do with your body. Not a big man, but he does a nice job physically on Kessel and then boxes out on Van Riemsdyk, thinking about going on offense, but that's the comeback. And then an excellent read getting down and taking away the passing lane again. That's a good shift. And the TV timeout, Tortorello was imploring his players, play harder. Let's drive the compete level up, and this is just before the break. Richardson does just that. And here's Tortorella. He, he knows the game's here. Yeah, 29 minutes left to go in this hockey game. The next goal is critical. It's either game on or game over. And Toronto started to pick it up with their top line. You think of going on a break with a seven-game losing streak. Ouch. Uh, we need something positive here to finish off for Vancouver. Falling out of the playoff spot with six straight losses. Longest losing streak since 2009. Hansen trying to get in on the wing. Troy Bodie against a pinching Edler got the puck to set it. Diaz shoots the puck back in for Vancouver. It's been amazing this year how streaks have gone for teams though, isn't it? I mean, this team was dynamite in December. 10-1-2, and, and then all of a sudden 2000. 14, they just can't get a win. Funny how it, it just one goal. The late goal against Philadelphia. They tied it late in the game, then they won. And that was it. The wheels were off the cart. Or it was the 18-wheeler off the cliff. And ironically, the team that over the last decade could always score yeah. can't. Yeah. And this Toronto team is now like Vancouver used to be. They never have much trouble coming up with goals. Well, and the Leafs are rarity out shooting an opponent and getting a win. You can download the CBC Olympic game app and keep up to date with all that's happening in Sochi during the 22nd Winter Olympics. On every platform, the CBC's got you covered from Sochi. David Booth. 2009, he was the Florida Panthers MVP. Zach Cassian takes over in the attacking zone. Ham Hughes back at the blue line. He'll cycle back for Brad Richardson. This line's last shift, they were trapped in their own zone against this Kozak line. And so they do. Kozak. Up the boards, Cassian couldn't quite hold the line. Kessel did a flyby. Booth has a man trapped offside. Garrison with a long shot in. Gunnarsson got strafed by Richardson with his stick. Bozak carries the puck in. Kessel's right behind him. Canucks back to center. Here's Alex Burrows down the wing. Shoots the puck. Bernier makes the save. And you could see a bit of a hesitation at the blue line. It was almost though, as though Burroughs lost the puck again because yeah. of that mask. Well, you, you know it has to affect them. Any player that has that looking down, you use your peripheral vision. And what you end up having to do, as you saw the bouncing puck there, is instead of using the peripheral, you have to actually look down to see through it. We saw it, Glenn showed earlier Richardson and Van Riemsdyk going at it. Here's Booth, a little do-say-do -do at the blue line. Booth just holding on to him, hoping that 
the Leafs would play with one less man. As they entered the zone, the puck went the other way, though. So, time for a change for both teams. Daniel Sedin working against Nazem Kadri. Cycles back, Franson broke the cycle. Kadri passed the puck to Clarkson, and the Leafs are out to center. Loophole for Kadri. Good back check by Burroughs. He stole the puck. And he gets bumped by Clarkson, and the puck comes to center. Gleason for a loophole, and that play goes offside at the blue line. You see this line trying to get a little chemistry. Lupo, Clarkson, and now Nazem Kadri. I like the fact of getting Lupo on his left side. I think he's got that ability. He's a one-time shot. He can really see the ice well. I always found as a right-handed shot playing the left, it just opens up the ice so much for you. If you can find someone to get some chemistry with Clarkson, and now all of a sudden you've got some depth in the lineup. If Bolin comes back after the Olympic break, the Leafs lineup looking more like the Norris thought it might. Bozak line is right back on. Kessel shoots and he just missed the net. Randy Carl made a change. And he's got his top line out against the fourth line. Or parts of it for Vancouver. Tom Sestito. Yannick Hansen to center. Sestito and Lane are going to get off the ice in a hurry here. Carlisle not playing nice there. He doesn't really have the fourth line to go fourth line head-to-head -head with 7-D in. He's down to three lines now. Jay McClement has not returned since he went heavily down to the ice and into the boards. He has to Edler. And maybe Randy's playing that top line a lot, just trying to get him going. He saw signs that they might be coming alive tonight. Down one to nothing. He needs a goal. Flip to center. Lupo will try and rush onto it. Harrison beats him. And on the hybrid icing, that's called against Toronto. Well, Phil Kessel, you talked about, and we have, how good he has been over the past 18 games. Well, it was a week ago he scored a beauty top glove. And tonight, the trigger finger just not quite as accurate as he just misses that one. Six goals in his last nine games with 26 points in those 18 games. He's the hottest scorer in the NHL since the 1st of January. How about the fact that he's caught Patrick Kane? There's a shot through from Dan Hamhuis. Loose puck. Bernier's down. And the puck was cleared away. It was a massive pile-up gridlock in front of Bernier. Right on top of him. Sestito. Dalpy's in front. Kellen Lane in this fourth line as well. And an icing call. John Tortorella sent out his fourth line. Centering pass. Dalpy gets a hold of it off of Tim Gleason. Back to the blue line. Hamhuis sets up Garrison. He fires. And Bernier found that. That's a hard, heavy shot from Jason Garrison, who's stopped by Bernier. Well, it happens off of the face-off, key face-off win. And a good job out of the corner, getting the puck to the net, and Bernier trying to find the puck through top. And he did. Still only one goal in the game, and it's for Ryan Kessler at the Vancouver Canucks on Hockey Night in Canada. Welcome back to Hockey Night in Canada from the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. Ryan Kessler's goal with 22 seconds left in the first period off the blocker of Jonathan Bernie and in. The only goal of the game as Nazem Kadri gets set for a faceoff with Jordan Schrader, and the Leafs win it because Lupo jumped the head off the wing. David Clarkson rushes onto the puck, straight up the middle, can't quite get to the net. The defense recovered after they opened up for him. Stanton and Corrado just about got caught and recovered. Daniel Sedin to center. Carl Gunnarsson on the other side. Lupo shoots the puck back in. Kadri goes after it. And the play is stopped in the delayed offside. One of those moments, Clarkson almost found his way to get through. And... You think of Roberto Luongo with an amazing story in Montreal, back-to-back Pacioretty penalty shots. There's a split second there where Clarkson might have got through. Stopped them both, even though Pacioretty ended up with a hat trick. Yeah, it is an amazing night. He had three goals, and he was stopped twice on penalty shots. But penalty shots like two and a half minutes apart, too. They're amazing. Alex Hitler with a long shoot-in. Jake Gardner is back. Ground on the boards, nobody there, so Edler's able to hold the puck in Cody Franson. The James Van Riemsdyk and out to center, driving wide on Diaz, takes the shot into the corner. Kessel on the other side, his shot hit a skate. Kozak, 
Kessel. Van Riemsdyk's in front. That just about banked in off the defenseman Alex Hedler. He had an own goal in Montreal the other night. That was a close call. Yeah, off the skate there. That one was very, very close. Cody Franson turns away from David Booth. Ran into Richardson and turned the puck over. Gardner backing him up. All sorts of different pairs here tonight for Toronto with seven defensemen in the lineup. Franson and Gardner becoming a steady pair. Riley and Cleason. Vancouver would just love to have some steady pairs for a few games. Danny Hanson kicked at the puck in his own zone. Now he's got it behind the net. And he backhands it to center. Higgins went up the ladder, couldn't get the puck. Troy Bodie tripped over the stick of Diaz as he tried to forecheck. Higgins gets the puck out to center. Tim Gleason to Troy Bodie, a little tip in. Edler's the first man back. Rafael Diaz. Higgins tipped the puck and got it through to Yannick Hansen. He stops to Higgins. Broken up by Morgan Ryan. Centering pass got to Hansen. He couldn't get the shot. Gleason got it first. Another deflection off a skate. Dan Hamuse. Higgins. Kessler. Back to Higgins. To Kessler just out of his reach. Now he throws the puck in front. Come on, off go, the boards. And Troy Bodie starts out two on two. Lupo with some speed, a good play, closing the gap by Dan Hamhuis, poking the puck away. One thing you see from Vancouver here is a lot of stretch passes. They're trying to send a winger out high, keep the D back in off for Toronto. And it's been fairly successful. Ellen Lane. Cadry got to the puck first. Jason Garrison bucked as he put the puck behind the net. Lane is there trying to get it out. Doesn't do it. Lupo. Paul Ranger intentionally wide of the net. He played the puck around. An indirect pass to Jake Carter. Ranger will pinch on the other side against Dolphy. Over to help out Tom Sestito. And he's iced the puck here. That's waved off. That's a good non-call. It's the angle that Gardner took there. Instead of going right after the puck, he took a longer angle, and that's why it was waved off. And now he's going to get an explanation here from the linesman. Look at the play down low. Bozak with a little backhand pass. Kessel tried to go to Van Riemsdyk. And you mentioned the foot of Edler goes down and gets a little bit of a break here as Luongo wasn't quick to react. A little slash on the hand and a grimace from Kessel. Hey, Richardson breaks a stick here. These teams don't play against each other that often or in this building that often. Richardson went to the wrong end of the bench to get a new twig. Here's Phil Kessel in deep through the puck out front. Bozak was checked from behind by Alex Burrows. Dion Phaneuf all alone shoots just wide of the net. Here we go again. Alex Burrows and Phil Kessel, they fought in November in Vancouver. They're going to do it again. Burrows still wearing a full face shield. Yeah, this is one you hope for Kessel. You see he's got his gloves on still, and rightly so. Last thing you want is to be breaking a hand on that face mask. Well, they were unlikely combatants when they scrapped in Vancouver in November. <laughs> Who would have thought they'd do it a second time? Okay, define scrap, Huey. Well, okay, so we well, use the, go to the tape. Liberally. Let's go to the tape, Glenn. Okay, <laughs> we'll see what kind of a lengthy scrap that was back in November 2nd. Count the punches. Look at they're wailing on each oh, other. Yeah. Away from the play, just like tonight. One punch. Take down, a couple on the ground. Could have been two for roughing each. And it started with a slash there. You see the reaction of Kessel got up his face. And Burroughs didn't back oh. down either. A couple of hard cross checks. Gloves finally. Oh, neither guy. There's the gloves down finally by Burroughs. With only a minute 10 left in the second period. Now, Jim, the arm was up on the official in the neutral zone before. The question is, who is he calling? You saw the slash by Burroughs, but you could easily take the cross checks back of Kessel, too. I think Burroughs initiated it. It looks like Vancouver's going to get the extra. Said before the fight started, 
the arm was already up. So I think the official in the neutral zone maybe caught that slash first, and that's going to be the first call. Welcome the viewers of the Carolina Montreal game. A one nothing lead on a Grayson Bowman goal there for Carolina. Here it's one nothing as Ryan Kessler scored for Vancouver with 22 seconds left in the first period, and we're very late in the second. With the Canucks holding on to a lead at one to nothing in a game they badly need, having lost six in a row. Will be a power play, power play for Toronto. The extra penalty will go to Burroughs. It'll be their third power play of the game. They went 0 for 2 early in the first period. Morgan Riley smoothly out of his own zone to Nazem Kadri. Second power play unit starts. The first one was on the ice when the penalty was called. Joffrey Luka tried to drop the puck off of his skate. And that allows Jason Garrison to clear the puck the length of the ice. Zach Cassian in the penalty box serving the extra Burroughs penalty as the Leafs move in on the power play and they moved in offside with 35 seconds left in the period. I would expect the Kessel line to get out there now. I thought the early power plays, a lot of times as players, when you get an early power play to start the game, you're not into your offensive game. And I, I thought it really derailed any momentum that Toronto could get in that first period. But what an opportunity here as Bozak Van Riemsdyk and Clarkson takes Kessel's spot. With Cody Franson and Dion Phaneuf. It'll be a different kind of power play then with Clarkson on the ice to, in, like, in all likelihood, they'll get him to the front of the net. He's the puck carrier right now. Brad Richardson checks him. Puck's dug loose by Bozak. They'll get it back to the blue line and Dion Phaneuf. Dozen seconds to go. Franson. Phaneuf. Tips the puck across, side of the net, Clarkson, Van Riemsdyk in front, shoots into the corner. Didn't get much of a shot away. Back towards the front of the net, Bozak, and a penalty's coming up. Just as the horn sounds, there's a hooking penalty in front of the net. Yeah, and Stanton he, is hurt. He got knocked down, and it was Clarkson going after him with the hook. He'd be the judge here. It, Oh, he got hit with a knee into the head. But here's the hook around the hands right there. And then coming across as Bozak got his knee right in the head of Stanton. So Clarkson gets some power play time, but he took his team off of it with a penalty at the end of the second period. It's 1-0 Vancouver leading. He's the man who scored. Welcome back to Hockey Night in Canada. All the combatants that are in the penalty box mean that this third period in Toronto starts with the team's four on four. They believe haven't been able to score this season against Vancouver. Roberto Luongo shut them out four to nothing in Vancouver. He hasn't given up a goal through two periods here tonight. Vancouver desperately trying to hold on and maybe build on this lead. And Toronto, a team that seems to score at will with 39 goals in their last 10, has no he shoots, he scores in their lineup tonight. Nazem Kadri with a pass behind him from Joffrey Lupo. Jordan Schrader gets out to center. And the puck is backhanded onto the Leaf bench. Uh, Leafs without Jay McClement, who hasn't returned since he was hurt, so they're down to 10 forwards. Well, you'd expect to see a lot more of Kessel, Van Riemsdyk, and Bozak then with a one-goal deficit. As you mentioned, Jim, this has not been the norm for Toronto. They've found ways to win games, getting outshot terribly, and scoring three goals typically is a pretty easy night for them. Well, what has been the norm on Saturday nights has been Joffrey Lupel. Nobody in the league scores more on Saturday than Lupel. So if you were to put your money on one horse, it would be number 19. But it's an odd night with a big break coming and an early start. And Kessel's got some problems with his helmet as the snap is getting replaced. So that's what the delay is here. It's been that kind of night, isn't it? A lot of delay and not the kind of energy we would expect with the big game before the break. All of the players who are heading to Sochi are packed up. Seven of them from the Vancouver Canucks, three from the Toronto Maple Leafs. All their sticks are taped together. Their bags are packed. Most of them will stay at the airport tonight, head for New York, where the charters will leave tomorrow with 
Players from all the different teams riding on the same aircraft to get to Sochi in time for the start of the games. And the players that aren't going, they get 10 days off. And can you imagine the practice on the 11th day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the worst part you. of it will be the weigh-in. Yeah. How'd you do on your break? There's Dan Hamhuis with a long shot, and Jonathan Bernier stopped that up high. Vancouver has people going over the, over the place. Uh, seven different players going to Sochi, and you see their sticks are all taped and ready to go. And lots of them, because, and we know it, Russia's not exactly the easiest place to get into. And I don't imagine they get FedEx packages on a daily basis if you need more. So best to bring more than you need and not worry about it. But how many do you, do you pack for? Well, Switzerland, four games, five games. Canada going the whole way. I mean, it's... If you use somebody else's sticks in the last game, probably. There's an offside call. So the Canucks have seven players headed for the Olympics. Four of their young players are going back to Utica in the American Hockey League after the game. Most of the Ontario guys are staying in the East, so the Canuck charter will head back to the West Coast darn near empty tonight. So that's the kind of different day it is around the NHL with everybody having made plans before this game started about where they're going next. It was the same in 2010, as I recall, the last game before the last games before the Olympics were pretty unpredictable. Alexander up to center. Daniel Sedin off the wing. Chris Higgins around for Rafael Diaz. Vancouver's on a short power play here now. Their second of the game, Diaz on the other side. Edler shoots, Bernier made the save. Rebound is knocked wide of the net by Ryan Kessler. Not sure Bernier saw that, but he made a great positional save with his leg down in the butterfly. Yeah, that's a good example of just trying to get up tight to where the deflection is coming from. Good timing getting down, didn't leave any gap open. Interception by Bozak. Teams are Close to being an even strength. 20 seconds left in his Vancouver power play as Diaz gets back for the puck. Watch by Mason Raymond. Next change on the fly and start out. Richardson, Booth, Hansen come out of the power play. Paul Ranger steps in for Toronto. Puck comes out towards Hansen. Mason Raymond got there first. Carson's out of the penalty box. Teams are five on five again. As Brad Richardson knocked down a pass in the neutral zone. Booth with a tip in. And Tim Gleason goes back to the puck. Bernier played into the corner, but he gave it away. Should have left it for Gleason. The centering pass is tipped wide by David Booth. Richardson. He's been one of the best Canucks in the game. Tim Gleason. Up the boards. And Dan Hamhuis. In over 17 minutes in the first two periods. Shot the puck in. Now he's got to back up defensively. Take care. Hit by the solid Jason Garrison. Garrison up the boards, and the Canucks get the puck to center. Morgan Riley chased by Tom Sestito. Sestito gets to the puck, trying to center it. Cadre blocked that, and then he tripped and fell down, just like McKenna did, but he didn't have the same result. Frank Carrado, his slap shot knocked down in front of the net. Top three loop quickly up to center. Leaps with numbers through center. Bill Kessel for Joffrey Lupin. got the puck through to Kadri, and he tried to feed it in front. Kessel with a shot. What a save by Luongo off Bill Kessel. Another shot up high, and then hit Tom Sestito. He went down, but he got up, fortunately. Wild, a series in the game from the blue line. Morgan Riley's shot. Took a deflection, went wide. Lupin. Morgan Riley with a chance to move in. Lost control of the puck. Bill Kessel, the job for Lupo, Cadre's in front, the centering pass didn't get through, Jordan Schrader played it away, Sestito to Cassian, and he relays to the defenseman, Frank Corrado, and he gets the shot on goal. Up the middle, a shoot in by Nikolai Kudelman, will go after Alex Hedler, who moved the puck around the boards, and Kellen Lane got it up off the leg of the linesman, and Franzen dumped it right back in. To steal the puck. Clarkson, Edler recovered, threw it around to the boards. Franson holds it in for Toronto. Della Lane losing the battle to Clarkson, who's knocked down. 
Edler tipped over the pile. Clarkson comes up with the puck. Leaves it in the corner. Mason Raymond to Cody Franson. On the other side, Jake Gardner. Back to France, and he shoots just wide. Clarkson on the rebound, couldn't shoot. Raymond with his shot stop. Another shot wide of the net, this time by Kuhlman. Canucks trapped in their own zone. Zach Dalpy was saying uh, the referee, that puck hit the screen, and only one of the four officials, a linesman out of the blue line, saw that the puck actually hit the netting. I don't think it did. I think the linesman who made the call was on the opposite side, but a good sequence of offense. Phil Kessel finds a little give and go, gets the puck back, and has the great chance that Luongo able to get the glove on. And Kessel looks skyward after that shot. You can see the traffic in front, all kinds of chances in front of the net there. Morgan Riley can't get the puck to the net either. Something that Vancouver has not had much of the past couple weeks, and that's puck luck. There's a good example in the defensive zone how pucks just bounce their way or out of the way. Had some puck luck in the first period for the only goal of this game. A fortuitous bounce off the blocker and in for Ryan Kessler. Leaves regroup and Kessel leads them in with speed on his off wing. Snapped the shot. Garrison deflected it out of play. Rob Pizzo, what's up? Hey guys, quick update on the status of Jay McClement. He will not return to this one. The Leafs are saying it's an upper body injury. Jim? How revealing. <laughs> well, he's got some time to heal. And here's how Jay McClellan tried to kick the puck up, got tangled up, and went down hard on the ice. And into the boards and has not returned. Right off the draw, Mason Raymond with a shot, a deflection, and Luongo had to make a save. Sullivan's been better on faceoffs tonight. Well, he has to be with no McClellan. Clemens had a whale of the year. Short-handed play, face-off play, maybe not so much offensively. He finally got that going a little bit, too. He had yeah. one in the first 50 games, but he's got two in his last eight, so... The one in the first 50, there wasn't even a goal in <laughs> Yeah, so... But a valuable guy that they're probably going to look to sign, re-sign. Him, coach Bowling. really likes him. That's yep. what I'm saying. A coach, when you have that stability, a guy you know you can put in any situation. If Randy Carlisle has his way, I'm sure there's some heavy conversation to try to get him signed. John Tortorella on the other side has really shuffled his deck here tonight. Uh, he hasn't had to through injury, but he's had all sorts of different line combinations going, and now he goes back to Schrader with Daniel Sedin and Alex Burrows trying to coax something out of his team offensively. Well, you think of the pressure to win a hockey game. I mean, he sees... They got a lucky goal. They got an opportunity to go home on this break with two points. They'll be grinding it out, I'm sure, the rest of this game. Now, have you guys noticed Daniel Sedin in the game tonight? No, not at all. And, you know, you look at the streak that Vancouver's been on, and yet how they have managed to stay either eight or in it is just incredible. You would think that the bottom would have fallen right out of it. Here's Morgan Riley back for the puck. For the Vancouver change, he's got some time and space. Flies through the neutral zone and snapped the shot, and Garrison again deflected it out of play. Still 1-0 on Ryan Kessler's goal at 19.38 of the first period. Time for our Hockey Night close-up, brought to you by Subway Restaurants, and tonight featuring Olympian Phil Kessel. Well, it's the go-to guy for Toronto, 17 more points than the second-best player in Toronto, and it's been a tough night for him. Had his hand whacked a couple times, a couple hits, and then it all ends with this. You don't see this often at all, ever. And Phil Kessel's had enough, and you know what? I'm going to throw the towel in on this one. Well, Randy Carlo hopes that he hasn't quite done that yet with 13.38 left in the third period. Team USA is hoping that you don't see more of those highlights. He punches his ticket to Sochi. I wonder who he's going to play with. You know Van Riemsdyk's going to be on the same line, but all the centers, all the centers but one are right-handed on Team USA. Played with Joe Pavelski in the last Olympics. Maybe Paul Stassi, left-handed center. Nikolai Kuhleman. Mason Raymond. And out, racing onto the puck is Troy Bodie. Raymond trying to join in, gets a shot. 
a deflection and Roberto Longo had to make a brilliant save. That just about dipped under his glove. Raymond to Carl Gunnarsson. Got away from Hanson, carries the puck in, puts it on goal, there's a rebound, Kuhlman can't bury it. Longo down and out, and Nikolai Kuhlman got there and couldn't put it away. And the Canucks don't look very good in their own end right now. Mason Raymond from behind the net. Gunnarsson's in front, he scores! Former Canuck Mason Raymond ties the game 1-1. Boy, momentum is a real powerful thing. And this is a shift that just kept building to a crescendo. Chance after chance, Luongo at the one chance, thought he had the puck. Look at the body standing around. Hamhus is down, and a perfectly placed shot with patience by Raymond. Watch him keep his feet moving here. He's got his head up the entire time, and just that quick release. Glenn, you probably had a perfect vantage point of that one. And it was like he never looked. He knew where he was shooting. He was going to a part of the net that he wanted to go to as he got the puck and was circling the back of the net. Played against Luongo long enough in practice to know that's the money shot. That's where I want to go, and that's where he went. 16 goals now for Mason Raymond. Kuhlman and Bodie assist at 7.23. New game tied 1-1, third period. You gotta think that one feels pretty good of all those 16. Booth with a shot, Bernier with a save. Richardson right there looking for the rebound. Is the Canucks bounce back and just about got ahead again. Well, we should be in for a second of the third so with 12 minutes to go. There's Joffrey Luca. In on Ender, puts the puck away for a moment. Kadri's trying to come up with it. Leon Phillip with the return pass from Gunnarsson. Advances to Luca. And Rafael Diaz took over the long with the poke check at the side of the net. Edler up the boards. Daniel Sedin tipped the puck through. Here's a two-on-one. Jordan Schrader with Alex Burrows. Burrows stand on it. And he still hasn't scored, and that's the kind of season it's been. Burrows to the front of the net, trying to bank one, and he goes to the net. Gets a rough ride from Gunnarsson as Bernier makes the save. Well, he said body language is everything, and he's looking at the scoreboard as he's watching. A pinch by Gunnarsson, can't get the puck. Sedin able to get it through. You know the pass is coming. He's looking for it and just cannot control it. Man, when you are not going well, you don't want the puck in that situation, and the body language of Burroughs looked it there. Well, it's getting way too close to a calendar year since he scored a goal. He's only got points in three of his games this year. There has been a lot of nights where the drought's done. Raymond chopped the puck in. It's cleared right back up. Dan Andrews. I wonder how long this Kuhlman at center is working. They've got some good confidence Randy Carlisle does on him. Kuhlman back defensively. He's always been good at that. A little different role as the centerman supporting the defense. Roberto Luongo is now in a 1-1 tie. First time he's given up a goal to Toronto this season. He's also had 20 blocked in front of him tonight by his Vancouver defenders, including five by Dan Hughes. Don't you think a number of them were hit by a Toronto player in front, too? There's been a lot of traffic that he's had to fight his way through in this game. Here's Hanson and off the wing and a diving play by Tyler Bozak. And a good effort defensively. Now Bozak has the puck to Van Riemsdijk with Kessel. Drop pass. Here's Bozak in front. And that missed Van Riemsdijk and Kessel. They couldn't come up with it. Bozak again slides the puck across. Penalty coming up against Vancouver. Bozak. Van Riemsdijk stationed in front. The extra attacker is on on a delayed penalty call against the Canucks. Kessel shoots his scores! Number 31 for number 81, and Toronto has the lead, 2-1. to one. Oh, this was all Kessel. He drew the penalty, the delayed call on Richardson, and then just kept the play alive. And a heads-up play, 
with traffic in front. I mentioned earlier how Luongo looking through the bodies. A chance for the puck there, the slash and the overreaction by Kessel drew the call. And you can see Richardson didn't like the call. Swooping around, Bozak keeps the play alive, doesn't allow the Canucks to touch it. And then look at the big body of Ben Reimsdijk. Here's that pairing again. Traffic in front, Luongo couldn't get out to the top of his crease, and that one finds a way through. Well, Ben Reimsdijk, always around the net. You look at where he scores his goals from, it's always within a couple feet of the blue paint, and if he's not scoring them, he's drawing a crowd, and people like Kessel are finding ways to put it in the back of the net. Well, they call him a one-shot scorer. Doesn't need many to put it in the net. He only had one shot in the first two periods, his second shot of the night. Into the net for a 2-1 lead. Phil Kessel has given the Maple Leafs the lead on Hockey Night in Canada. Well, some things don't change from week to week. Well, let's go back seven days ago. What a beauty this was. Off the bar and in, and Kessel demolished Ottawa. Second period, just off with his trigger finger. He looks up at the sky. That went in last week. Well, stick to it, Phil, and that's exactly what he does. Sticks to it here, head up, and a 48-foot wrister in the same spot that he beat Ottawa. Top shelf. Man, can he snap that. And I said not many players are going to take that shot that far back. Just a slingshot off of his stick. The momentum he generates with that quick wrist. How whippy is his stick? <laughs> it's the rubber band. Yeah, it's like a young kid's under 80 anyway. I would maybe be able to make a bet that his sister uses more of a flex than he and does. It's all about your technique yeah. too. I, I could use that stick and I wouldn't even be able to get the puck off the ice because of the style and the technique of my shot. So different with him. Here's Jordan Schrader back for Vancouver. Canucks now searching for offense, and again, that's been such a problem for them in this six-game losing streak. Schrader, Sedin, and Burroughs, Gleason. Leon put up and back. Up the middle to Nikolai Kuhlman, and he'll start out. This the line really created a lot. They had a great shift and ended up with a goal and they got the Leafs the momentum and they got the 2-1 lead. Two minutes and 40 seconds later. Long shot in by Alex Edler and he stays on the puck. For Alex Burrows. Daniel Sedin to Burrows in his feet. Diaz with a shot. That's blocked. Brad Richardson comes up with the puck. To Daniel. Back for Burrows. Again, he lost the puck in his feet. Gabriel Diaz in deep. Daniel Sedin backhands the puck out front. It got through the legs of Richardson and out to Mason Raymond. Raymond's at the end of his shift. Dumped the puck in and headed for the bench. Yeah, Kessel wanted that puck. He, was, he was revving up. And Raymond didn't look to his right. Got a little bit of a stare down by Kessel. We thought he'd get it. Here's Bozak back in. His lines really come alive. Center pass. Kessel just wide of the net. Another penalty coming up. He's Toronto goal and it's a 3-1 Maple Leaf lead speed again it creates problems and it's on a back check watch number seven booth he's got the stick into the stick area of Bozak Bozak keeps it alive a bad bounce Glenn you said bad puck luck look at number 23 again Edler knocked one in in Montreal that one goes almost off his face as Van Riemsdyk from a bad angle and the bad luck continues for the Canucks. Now you can't draw that up, can you? Look at Luongo. He knew it was coming. He tried to get it with the back of his pad. So now a 3-1 lead. Alex Hedler headed for the Olympics, worried about his game. And back off an injury if this hasn't been able to get, get it again. Most of the season has been like that. That top line for Toronto. They didn't do much early, but here when the game turned with the Kuhlman line getting that goal, the top line gives them some leeway with the two-goal lead. No matter what happens with this Toronto team, they can score statistically in so many ways. They look like they shouldn't be where they are in the standings, but they can skate, 
and they can score. And as you know, if you've watched the head coach, he hasn't always liked their game start to finish, but this is a team that in five minutes can win a hockey game. In less than five minutes, they have all three of their goals for the next four minutes and 42 seconds, and a 3-1 lead against a team that can't score and will have trouble in the last seven minutes of this one coming back. And the insight from Kessel and Bozak is the scoring play. Nikolai Kuhlman. Again in a good position defensively as the center and now offensively two on one. Kuhlman stops up, shoots Logo, had to make a great blocker save. And Jim, that was Alex Sadler, a bad pinch in the neutral zone there. Didn't get body, didn't get the and allowed that odd man rush. Handler to Rafael Diaz and he dumps the puck in. will stand here all day now with a 3-1 lead. Six minutes to go. Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, and Kessel have come back on. Daniel Sedin to Jordan Schrader. He shoots that block. And Van Riemsdyk got the puck. A breakaway pass. Kessel just about got it. It's offside, but he got in behind Dan Hamhuis and he just about knocked that out of the air. Mason Raymond, Phil Kessel, James Van Riemsdyk have scored it. It's a 3-1 lead for Toronto. It's bad enough your team can't score. So let's go back to Thursday night. Your team still can't score. So it's imperative you don't score on your team. And that's what happened on Thursday. Edler, back of his own net. The team didn't score, loss. Chalk it up. And then tonight, same thing. Same player. Different bat channel. Shot goes off Edler. See him as he approaches the screen there and it's right in the chin in the back of the net. Now this was a 1-1 hockey game when Bozak makes this back check to the right of your screen. The great Kessler pass that nearly led to a breakaway. It doesn't. The Leafs come down and within a couple minutes they're now up by two. What a change of events, huh? Remember two at one to nothing. There was a two-on-one. Schrader and Burroughs got nothing out of it. Alex Hedler's got that little black cloud over his head everywhere he goes right now. I think it's around 22 as well. Yeah, Daniel hasn't really been able to get any open ice or freedom. He barely has the puck. He's got it right now, though, and Schrader out front doesn't get the pass, and it's cleared out to center. Bozak for Van Riemsdyk, and they got lucky and went on net, and that forces a faceoff in the attacking zone for Toronto. Well, you think for Luongo, too, uh, Three plus goals against now in six straight games. And you saw as Glenn showed, they, they haven't been the luckiest of goals against. So you wonder what that does to your confidence going forward as well. This Vancouver team desperately needed to find a way to grip this one out and get a win and get on the break. And now it's turned around so quickly. Okay. The disappointing thing too is the 2 1 goal to top line that's on. The guys you want on the ice, your top defense pair, your top center, right? Get out, get out there. Toronto with a chance to go into the break, 8-2-1. and one. And A really good run. And you think it could have really unraveled in Florida. Yeah, that was a horrible game against the Florida Panthers. And fortunately for them, they were able to get right back and win a huge road game against Tampa. The perplexing thing about Toronto is they haven't lost much in this last streak, but when they lose, <laughs> yikes. 7-1 in Dallas, and they had a chance to pull it out of the fire in Florida, and couldn't. Game is over in Carolina. And we welcome the viewers of the Carolina-Montreal game, a 4-1 win for the Montreal Canadiens into the break. Here, when you last joined us, the Vancouver Canucks had a 1-0 lead, but it's 3-1 Toronto. Three goals for the Maple Leafs in under five minutes in the third period. Mason Raymond, Phil Kessel, and James Van Riemsdyk. And the Canucks are chasing the game and in danger of losing their seventh consecutive. Booth, Richardson, Cassian in after the puck here. Frank Corrado holds the line. And Morgan Riley moves the puck out. Nazem Kadri back to Morgan Riley, who stayed with the rush. Takes the shot. Luongo made the save. 
Ryan Stanton got a hold of the puck, gave it away. David Clarkson in front, that hit a skate and didn't get to Joffrey Lupel. Hammered back in by Paul Ranger. Down to four minutes to go in the third period. And Daniel Sedin is back on for Vancouver. Banks the puck in and goes after it. Gunnarsson's the first man back. The two Swedes come together along the boards. Johnny Bear is the referee who is telling the players to play the puck. And they'll go back at it on the other side. Jordan Schrader got the puck. Burles with a shot. Stopped by Jonathan Bernier. Dan Hamme is trying to hold the puck in. Can't. It's knocked down. Here comes Van Riemsdyk. Kessel streaking to the net. There's the pass. Tip just wide. Tip out of the air and just wide by Phil Kessel. And another great chance for this top line of the Maple Leafs. Van Riemsdyk was trying to delay long enough to slide that one on the ice down. He rushed it a bit, got it in the air, but Kessel got a piece of it anyway. Such good skating, but everything can happen so quickly off the rush. Kessel again trying to center, knocked out by Jason Garrison. To the blue line, Gleason holds the puck in. Dan Hamuse has a look around as he gets to the puck. Mason Raymond comes to him. At center, Morgan Riley shoots the puck back in for Toronto. I don't say very often anymore that Morgan Riley is a rookie. He doesn't look like it, does he? He's really settled into his game, doesn't he? I think part of that is the confidence of the coach putting him out there. There's not a question whether he's going to be in or out of the lineup. There's a real confidence level in his game right now. A uh, left shot playing the right side, too, and how difficult is that? Not many guys play their offside. Temple Newman did for many years. He was good at it. You've got to have great ability to skate and great hands. Puck's coming around the boards. You don't have the right angle with your stick. Somebody's got to do it in Toronto because they're all lefties and with the exception of Cody Franson. There's an icing call against Toronto, but he's handled it very well. And Phil Kessel has handled his third period pretty well. Just about got his second and his 32nd. Well, you can see he wanted it on the ice in that one. Just a bit of a roller. He got a piece of it. Van Riemsdyk knew exactly where he wanted. You can see the stick of Garrison, though, kind of lifted that one up a bit. But just still, wouldn't sit down. Almost got it. To it. He still thinks he should have had it. Yeah, Roberto Luongo is on the bench with a minute 56 to go. And a two-goal Vancouver deficit. Six attackers. Richardson won the draw. Rafael Diaz. Big crowd forms in front of the net. Now they start to spread out. David Booth relays for Richardson. That's Gleason without his stick. He's trying to pick it up, and he's got it again. Diaz. Richardson's in front. Kessler's in front. Booth has the puck. To Alex Edler. He shoots the deflection. Bring it. Got a hold of the puck and then he lost it. David Booth couldn't get to it. Clear around the boards and out by centerman Nikolai Kudelman. Daniel Sedin is back for the puck. This allows the Leafs to change. A drop pass to Diaz. Kessler with some speed. Attacks the blue line. Took a shot that was blocked and deflected by Driver right to his goaltender Bernier. Well, the period started with the Vancouver Canucks nursing a one-goal lead. Uh, three great chances down low ended up with a perfectly placed shot by Mason Raymond over the top shoulder of Roberto Luongo. Phil Kessel on a delayed penalty takes his time and rips one through a screen off the post and in. And then bad luck, which has been following this Vancouver Canuck team around, Ben Reemsdijk off the chin of Edler. And that put us to a 3-1 deficit. Timeout called here with a minute 14 to go. 24 shots for Toronto. 30 now for the Vancouver Canucks. But just one goal. And they had a 1-0 lead. It's attention to detail, though, guys. You know, when you, you look at the last play there with Daniel Sedin, you know you, the Leafs are tired. You know they need a change. Puck gets to center. And instead of just taking it and ramming it down the Leafs' throat, he doubles back here. Okay, there we go. See you later. And Five change. guys change, and you get some fresh bodies on the ice. So enough gets on the ice. So just a little bit of detail would have kept a Toronto team tired with one less man on the ice. And Tim Gleason out instead of enough. 
Ryan Kessler to take the draw against Tyler Bozak. Kessler won it. Daniel's shot was blocked before it got through. And now Diaz is going to chase the puck. There's an open net. Joffrey Lupel, Mr. Saturday Night. Can't get a hold of it to get the puck to the net. Alexander up in the middle of Ryan Kessler. And he comes again. Higgins with his shot. Bernier steered the puck to the boards. Schrader almost tripped to the puck. Now he kept it in. Daniel Sedin out front. Higgins got crossed up and couldn't get it. Edler to Diaz, and it's offside. The pass was just outside the line. 46 seconds to go. Not lost in this comeback by the Toronto Maple Leafs is the fact that their goaltender, Bernier, made one mistake. You think at the end of the first period, the Kessler goal, he whiffed on it, tried to deflect it into the corner. And this Leaf goaltending tandem has had many a nights when they've been outshot so badly and they've supported their team while here the offense has come and supported the goaltenders one mistake Edler from the blue line takes the shot and Bernier making no mistake hangs onto the puck for a faceoff with 38 seconds left and Glenn what difference do you see of Bernier now that he's clearly the guy well it, it, even that last little glove save just a simple little save but he holds on to it because he knows I'm on top of my game, and I'm going to get my top center iceman and Bozak out. Bozak's on the bench. I'll hold on to the puck. Attention to detail. Bozak comes out. Face-off win. See you later. There's the face-off win. Crashing through is Higgins, and he just about slid that under Bernier, who holds the goal line and stops play again. Boy, attention to detail. That was a missed assignment there off the draw. Watch how quickly Higgins got inside Dion Phaneuf. So enough lucky not to take a penalty there as he got the hook in on the hands. Now a scramble off the draw. Kessler goes to the puck. Daniel Sedin had a look around before the puck got there. In for Kessler. There's players in front. And the pass goes right by all of them and out to center ice. Diaz kind of shoot it back in. Higgins and Schrader were in front of the net of that pass. Breeze right by the man. Diaz to center ice. And another puck gets by Rafael Diaz. Back is Jason Garrison. There's an icing call. But it's a two-goal deficit for Vancouver with six seconds to go. Bernier thought of shooting that puck. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> oh, I was reading his mind. Two-goal lead. Not much time left. Yeah, you go for it. He got out behind the net and just froze. No, not a good idea. You don't get many chances to do that. Olympic Prime with Ron McLean still upcoming after this game that is thanks to a face-off win pretty much over. And the Toronto Maple Leafs go into the break on a high with eight wins in their last 11 games. The Vancouver Canucks sink to seven straight losses after a 3-1 come from behind win for the Leafs. Well, it's been quite a streak for the Toronto Maple Leafs, for the Vancouver Canucks, another frustrating end. And they're going to need some time on that break to get themselves together. Toronto probably would love to continue playing through this break the way they've been going. Uh, I talked about it at the start, the tale of two cities. The best of times just got better for the Leafs and the worst of times for Vancouver. Could they get worse? Yeah, they did. They got worse and they got the break to heal their lumps and mentally get back on track with a healthy team and a lot of hockey left. And we'll turn our attention to Sochi as the lights will go out on the NHL for a couple of weeks tonight after a 3-1 win for the Maple Leafs. Here's Elliot Friedman.